From 2006 to 2007, the KXVO 10 o'clock news turned the world of broadcast television on its ear with its irreverent and absurd on-air comedy. Overnight, the show rocketed out of obscurity and to the zenith of popularity, only to be crushed under the weight of its own genius. And all along the way, it left a trail of imitators, detractors, enemies, and die-hard fans who, in the end, would never let the show they loved go off the air. When Pappas Telecasting launched the KXVO 10 o'clock news in Omaha, Nebraska at the beginning of 2006, they envisioned an edgy and hip news program for young people that mixed news and entertainment, something Omaha had never seen before. But few people gave it any chance of success. And for the first seven months, the critics were right. It just seemed like it was something that was thrown together. You know, uh, not a whole lot of people knew what was going on. Uh, there were very hard times, you know, very, very hard times. We were, all of us were this close from being homeless. I hated my job. I hated coming here. I, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I think Miramax rushed the production just a bit, and, uh, you know, it showed, definitely, in the product. It wasn't very good. The show wasn't funny. We didn't have good ideas. Um, uh, no ratings, obviously. When you're working pretty much by yourself with uh, no budget, It's not going to work. Viewers watched in painful awe as KXVO cycled through 13 different hosts, numerous writers and producers, and lost a staggering $600,000. I was one of the 13 hosts, and um, you know I did all I could, but back then work sucked. Every day we had a new host in here. We had to go through everything from reading a teleprompter to writing using a keyboard, a computer in general, it was horrible. Even worse, the show's ratings weren't just bad, they were abysmal. In the summer of 2006, the KXVO 10 o'clock news became the first news program in the history of television to earn a Nielsen rating of negative 12.3. I mean, I'd never heard of the show, I'd never seen the show, I didn't know what it was. But in the midst of the blackness... It's a desperate attempt to hit on this girl behind me. One minute, uh, there's Brian McFadden's head, and then another minute, uh, Batista's looming in front of the camera. I was totally schizophrenic, and I said, yeah, I'll do it. New hope would arrive in the form of a real, live, human laugh factory. We were in the darkness, and then Matt Geiler came, and uh, he showed us the light. I'm no deity. Uh, that's for certain, but I guess I was the knight in white armor, the shining knight on a hill. I, you remember that scene in Lord of the Rings Two Towers when Gandalf appears <laughs> and charges down into the Vale to save the day with a thousand glittering warriors, and that's basically what was happening. I felt like the show was starting to go in the right direction. You know, we, we started to, to find out we had the tools that we needed to, to put on a, a decent show. So many things to tell her, but how to make her see. The man has ideas, all sorts of them. And when you're working in an environment that, um, you know, hates ideas and kind of stomps on good ideas, to have him come in and say, these are the things that, you know, I thought of in my own brain. We should do them. They're funny. I mean, that's, that's pretty overwhelming. The very same week that corporate management was planning to cancel the KXVO 10 o'clock news, an improv comedian named Matt Geiler walked through the studio doors. No one knew it at the time, but the bright young comedian would save the show and launch it into the stratosphere. There was something. There was just, there was something about it. He took us and molded us to, and, uh, and we became something that I don't think any of us knew uh, we could be. I had to go get a chocolate shake from Wendy's. I just I couldn't think straight. In fact, after Geiler completed a four and a half hour vaudeville routine audition on top of the desk of general manager Randy Oswald, the heads of the studio decided to give the world's worst TV show one last chance. There was the life support system, but in front of the camera, where it mattered most, there was a there was a black hole, and that's and so I guess yeah you know savior or whatever that change would uh, alter the face of television forever. 
Guyler wasted no time. Shirts started coming off and tights started to be worn. Within days, the show became an irreverent, absurdist theater of comedy featuring Guyler, Stein, Beneke, and Van Roy. The four of us, I would say, was almost like we were brothers that got along. You know, some might call that friends. I call that a band of brothers. The headlines of the day were skewered with a hip and edgy humor that instantly resonated with the press and viewers. The KXVO 10 o'clock news was beginning to make some noise. Your 10 o'clock news starts now.